So my name's James. I am a production tutor in the new education hub, teaching things like Logic Pro, as we can see lovely behind us. Oh, trust me, if you don't have colour coordination on these things, good luck finding which track you're trying to edit. Yeah, yeah it's absolute so mania. So how long have you been working this stuff? About three and a half years now, thinking about it. About three and a half-ish. It was May 2019, I think. 2019. Um, I used to practice when Solomon was in a recording studio as well. That's where I met like Andrew, Patch, people like that. Um, I was in my first ever band whilst we rehearsed at Solomon. So it's quite nice to come like full circle. Before I started working here, uh, I was in a vape shop of all things. I've been to university and obviously music jobs are incredibly hard to find. Um, and then this one just popped up and just took a leap of faith and went for it. It was uh, Andrew and Michelle B. Did you really? You interviewed James? Yeah. Andrew interviewed me and now he's back here, stuck with me. Yeah, were you nervous? Incredibly. I wasn't nervous when I saw Andrew, I was nervous before that though. So when I was practicing here, uh, we didn't see as much of each other obviously as we do now, because obviously we work at the same time, but my days now, I'm not normally based in here in the studio at the moment, I'm based in the classrooms. Um, all the classrooms have got logic on, um, teaching young people and, and people that we support how to use the software and then you've got to learn how to like mix the track, make it sound good, bring it up to an industry standard. Um, there are certain do's and don'ts that, you know, it's music, things are bendable but you normally have like a set of rules and that's sort of what I'm trying to pass on to them is these rules and of this is sort of what you do with the kick drum, this is sort of what you do with the snare drum. If you find something else works for you, absolutely. I can only teach people I can only guide them. I always say to my classes, I can only guide you. You have to find your own sort of place in production because every producer is different. Every set of ears is different. So you can only work with your own ears and, and learn. And the best way to learn is just by doing it and making things that maybe sound a bit naff, maybe um, what you first expected. And you never know, you might find that pr the production side, instead of like playing an actual instrument, is something that you're really interested in. We have a lot of beat makers here. So they're really trying to study like synths and 808 drum machines, bits like that. So I've got a bit more of an academic background. Um, I went to Bradford College, I did a HND, then moved to Leeds Beckett and did my third year for my BA. Um, in That was music performance and production, which is quite a unique course actually, having that element of you've got to be able to play and put on live shows and things like that and, and also learn how to record and do this side. So it was a very, very, very stressful third year. And in September, I've just started doing my uh, master's degree in advanced production and mastering techniques. So I'm still working full time and I'm doing that on the side and trying to do a band. So this is Logic Pro. This is um, actually owned by Apple. Hence why every computer we have is Apple. 17 Mac Minis at the moment, um, all running Logic. We also have a couple of other iMacs in the other building that also have Logic on. So this project is one that I did last year with a student. Um, he had the creative control on this project. Um, we had a couple of little bits that happened by accident, which seems to happen in music production. Um, in the old studio, we had a really like, the live room's really loud coming through. My guitar pickups were picking it up and it created this really cool, weird, distorted vocal um, on the intro of the track. And then the rest of it, um, it's literally called The Absolute Banger. I absolutely love this track and I wish I'd written it myself because I'd have put it out by now. It's unbelievable and I'm hoping that student does work, wants to continue work on it and get some lyrics in. So it's still not fully finished because they were very low on confidence. Really didn't know where to start with mixing and I feel that last year I managed to bring him out of his shell and show him, look, we can work together. You collaborate with other musicians, especially as solo artists and even as bands. So this is the little weird intro over the top. I'll just turn it up a little bit so you can hear it. And it was actually Danelle in the live room in that sense. I'll just turn it back down. So we have this little like weird intro and then the guitars come in with like, it's a very indie desert rock sort of thing, which is probably my influence in, in that sense. Um, the student and I do have very similar music tastes in that respect. Um, but I think that he thought the chord progression, I put the lead line over the top. Um, he actually played the bass on this as well and played the little bits of the green MIDI data that we see down here. So we've got 
a synth, and we've got another synth not doing the right lot. And we've got what I call the percussionist worst nightmare of just an egg constantly going throughout this song to give it some drive and give it a bit of forward. So these are like the nice little verses. And then coming up in a second, we have this really cool, it, everything almost goes like telephone sound, like old retro telephone. Everything gets really cut in the middle. There it is. So you've got all this really cool like little bit and then it just kicks into the chorus, which is similar to the intro, just without the guitar riff and bits like that. But we had, I had such fun making this track. Like every session we'll come into it and I was like, I want to do more on it and let's go even further and further and further and further with it and work it out that way and it was so cool. Probably being able to do music every day and when I was practicing he here at obviously the old building, um, there was a family feel to it even then and people helped me, not just develop as a musician but de develop from a 16, 17 year old with a massive ego and an attitude problem um, and a distinct lack of friends to someone who's well rounded. And I feel that I want to pass that on as well because it was the making of me. If I hadn't come to I probably wouldn't have gone to university. I wouldn't have been given that confidence. Didn't really know what direction I, I was heading in. I, I was at college, but I was like, do I go back to my electrical that I'd done before college? Or do I do this, do I do that? and I was given a place to flourish and discover, yes, I like doing that. No, I don't want to do X, Y, and Z. And without Psalm, I probably wouldn't have carried on my education to university to obviously now doing a master's even now. And I feel that I want to give some of that back.